Well, 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 seeing is believe. Well, hey, Jack. You know, Angelique told me you two were doing a brother act, and I just couldn't believe it. Well, it's unfortunately no act. Yeah, it's very convincing. But wait, is, is there a problem here? No, what could the problem be? I mean, you two guys have buried the hatchet, smoothed your lives over, moved in here together all nice and cozy, all hunk and dory. Uh, yes, he is, sir. You can take your summons, and you can stuff it. Thank you, Winifred. If you think that I am getting on that stand and testifying against Dixie, you're nuts. Well, you don't really have any choice. Your honesty is the stuff of legend. Dixie is a fine mother, and I'm going to tell the court that, and I am going to tell the whole world that. You will tell the whole truth and nothing but anything else would be against your nature. And this time, the truth is on my side. Truth has never been a commodity that you've ever traded in, so how you can even pretend to recognize it is beyond me. I see the truth in this situation. Then you have to know that Dixie is the best possible mother for Adam Jr. Well, I can prove otherwise. I'm right. And deep down you know it. And when I get through on that witness stand, every... So how you can even pretend to recognize it is beyond me. I see the truth in this situation. Then you have to know that Dixie is the best possible mother for Adam Jr. Well, I can prove otherwise. I'm right. And deep down you know it. And when I get through on that witness stand, everybody else is going to know it, too. But they're going to know that Dixie is not fit to raise a child. No, they're going to know that you are not fit. Is that what you're going to tell them, Brooke? Oh, you can bet money on it. I'm going to tell them about the man who seduced a young girl in order to get her pregnant because his own wife was not able to give him a child. That is patently untrue. About that same man who tried to trick the whole world into believing that the father of that young girl's child was somebody else and how he tried to trick his poor, unsuspecting wife into adopting that and, child. And that is ancient history. Well, of course, then there's the whole sad saga of what you did to Dixie after that baby was born. How you tried to make her think she was insane. How you committed her to a sanitarium. None of this is relevant. It will not be admitted. Oh, it will be if I have anything to say about it. All they care about the court cares about is how good a father I am now and how good a mother Dixie is. Dixie is the best. The best doesn't hang around in bars picking up men. That is not how it was, Adam. Oh, so you admit that it happened. You saw it. You can't deny it. It was an isolated incident. It didn't mean anything. <laughs> it wasn't isolated. And it means everything. This is not something that happened a long time ago. This is this happened this past summer. When the best of all possible mothers was supposed to be on vacation, saying that she needed some kind of a respite from her stressful life. She was grieving for her dead brother. Oh, is that why she had little chats with him in his apartment? Is that why she moved in there? What does that mean? She had every right to be there. Did she have every right to try to pick up your fiance? She didn't know that Edmund and I... So you don't deny that the attempt was made? Excellent. I have no intention of helping you. Well, I have plenty of witnesses who testify that Dixie tried to pick up Edmund, Dick, and Harry. You're not going to get me to condemn Dixie. I won't do it. Your conscience will reign supreme, Brooke. And I don't think you're about to set yourself up for a perjury charge. I am not going to help you take that child away from her. My lawyer will cross-examine any defense you make of Dixie. And after all, how credible is one unfit mother in defense of another? You know what? You are a slimy... Especially when your child was sired by Dixie's husband in an adulterous relationship. If your lawyer mentions one word about Ted, I am going to sue you for libel. Oh, oh, come on. Brooke, you're smarter than that. You know that libel doesn't stand up unless the matter at hand is untrue. It's funny. You two ladies seem to be going after the same kind of guy. Me and uh, Tad and Edmund. And what about Brian? Or is he too young for you? Oh, boy, did you ever deserve that one. Well, I certainly hope you two boys are proud of yourselves. Because what you've done is absolutely legendary. You realize that you, what? Brooke thought she had the man of her dreams until he turned out to be a psychotic. 
And then Erica, she's in a hospital bed, not knowing what century it is because of you. And Angelique, she, she's gone to who the hell knows where just because she had to get away from it all. Well, yeah, you two are really quite something. You really are. Listen, Jack, I know how you feel about Angela no, leaving. No, Edmund, you don't have any idea how I feel about anything. And neither one of you could. Because neither one of you has the vaguest idea what it's like to really love a woman. Well, you may have a point there. All you two managed to do is destroy. You two destroyed Angelique. Look, we were trying to keep her out of harm's way, we, right? We, we, we tried to change her mind. Now, she, she talked us out of it. She was determined to go. In the end, we agreed that it was you best agreed. for her. You agreed. Like, you know what's best for anybody, huh? Like putting her in that hospital in Vienna and telling the world that she was dead. That was what was best for Angelique? Jack, hindsight's no good to anybody. Oh, really? And then the miracle occurs that she happens to recover. And what do you do? You have an affair with another woman. Oh, yes. You're always thinking of Angelique's best interests. I've admitted that I've made mistakes, Jack. And then you put her in between the two of you in this silly feud of yours. And I, like the fool of the world, spend my time keeping you two apart so you don't murder each other. Why? I should have let you two tear each other apart. Well, maybe I can amend that mistake right now. Maybe I should just do it my damn self. Maybe you should. Oh, really? And what is that supposed to mean? It means you're right. Whatever happened to those ladies is our fault. So whatever you want to do, we deserve it. What's the point? Too late for that now, isn't it? Jack, wait. Jack, let's settle this. Come on. I'll stay. No, no, no. You go to New York, all right? Be better. We'll work it out one-on-one. -on -one. Jack, listen to me. I am sorry about you and Angelique. I truly am. I'm sorry, too. Well, I'm pretty damn sorry myself. I'm sorry you saw that, Haley. Don't be. I clued into Daddy Dearest long ago. Have fun. And Brooke, next time, in law. Wait, 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 just, just hold on a minute. I want to Don't talk you to you. Don't you have a custody hearing to get to? Where are you going? Not to get drunk, if that's what you're worried about, Adam. You're just not worth it. I have business to attend to. That girl is incredible. How she can hold it all together after everything that you have put her through. I am the only reason she's still in one piece. I gave her good genes and a good home. Oh, you're taking credit for everything? Yes, I think I deserve it. For her problems, maybe. Look, I've worked very hard to be a good father. And I think Haley proves I've succeeded. Adam Jr. deserves the same breaks. I think you have done everything in your power to control that girl's life, and I think you're going to do the same thing to Adam Jr. My children need protection. Only from you. And last time, as I remember, Tad provided it. He stopped you cold, didn't he? Well, unfortunately, Tad is long gone. Well, fortunately for Dixie, she still has some fairly powerful allies, including me. And we are going to fight you every bit as hard as Tad ever did. Right, fine, fine, fine. Give it a try. But this time, I happen to be right. This time, I'm going to win. Don't count on it. What are you doing here? Um, testifying. For Dixie? No, against her, actually. Um, probably something to do with that night we ran into her in the bar. Any idea how we can approach it? Tell the truth. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe we could discuss how we'd get a slant on it. You can slant it however you want. Dixie. Dixie. Perfect. How are you doing? Oh, I'm hanging in there. I'll do whatever I can for you. You know that. I'm with you all the way. Well, I see we're all gathered for the defense. Sorry, there's no point to it. Why don't you just save it for the judge, Adam? The judge will get an earful. You can count on that. And justice will be served. Yes, you can count on that, too. After all these years, we're right back where we started with Adam Jr., aren't we? But this time, the verdict will be different. This time, I will win my son back. And there's absolutely nothing you can do to stop me. We talked about the weather. We talked...
talked about how we both hate big parties. We talked about parking. Yeah, the Wallingfords hired a couple of off-duty cops, and the streets were blocked. You couldn't get in, you couldn't get out. At any point, did this uh, defendant suggest a private one-on-one -on -one get together with you? You trying to say that she tried to pick me up? No way. Well, I have it on very good sources that uh, Miss Cooney invited Believe you me, to. Believe me, counselor, scratch. I know the difference between a woman who's trying to pick me up and a woman who's griping about parking problems. <laughs> Order. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Gray, let's move on to June 16th. Once again, you ran into Ms. Cooney, this time at Hal's Country and Western Bar. You were meeting your fiancé, Brooke English, there. Would you please tell this court what happened that night? Nothing happened. We met, talked, Dixie left, end of encounter. Oh, there was a great deal more to it than that, Mr. Gray. Wasn't Ms. Cooney shouting at Ms. English when you arrived? Well, Brooke and Dixie go back a long way, and they have a very complicated history. Unfortunately, misunderstandings are part of that history. Well, according to some accounts, Ms. Cooney's attack on Ms. English was loud and angry, irrational, unprovoked. Is that how you would describe the confrontation, Mr. Gray? I'm not really qualified to judge, because when a woman starts fighting with another woman, I generally get the hell out of the way. But Ms. Cooney, <laughs> excuse me, but Ms. Cooney stormed out, didn't she? Yes, yeah, she did. Alone. Thank you. No further questions? Your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, you and Brooke English ran into Dixie at Howells again, didn't you, on the night of September 11th when she stopped in to say goodbye and to thank the bartender. Is that right? Why were you there? Well, we were there to celebrate. Um, we had just set a date to be married. Tell the court what transpired between you and Ms. Cooney in Hal's bar on the night of June 16, 1992. We ran into each other. We talked about several things. Dixie's brother had died fairly recently. Her marriage had broken up, and I was concerned about her. So you expressed this concern, and... Dixie took it the wrong way. She thought I was challenging her right to be there. She took offense. At what point didn't... Uh... Didn't she shout at you, who the hell do you think you are? I don't remember exactly what she said. She was angry. Didn't she accuse you of thinking that she was a tramp? Dixie has accused me of a number of things over the years and vice versa. I really don't remember exactly. We've had a stormy relationship, I'm sorry to say. Where would she get the idea that you thought she was a traitor? Objection, Your Honor. The counsel is asking the witness to speculate, and I object to her characterization of my client. Sustained. Thank you. Ms. English, you are the very successful editor of a national publication. Do you make a habit of fighting with women in bars? I make a habit of defending myself against attack in private and in public, as any normal, sane person would do, including Dixie who I might add has every reason to be defensive around me. In my opinion, Dixie Cooney is no more erratic or unstable than I am, and as you just pointed out, I am the successful editor of a national publication in addition to being, like Dixie, a working mother. And you say the defendant has reason to feel defensive around you? I'm saying, in my opinion, any angry outbursts that Dixie has directed toward me are perfectly understandable, and in no way are they evidence of moral mental instability. And why is that, Ms. English? Because the father of my child was the love of her life. He was the man who saved her from Adam Chandler and the man that she would be married to today if he were still alive. Ms. English, it's already a matter of court record that you ran into Dixie on the night of September 11th at Hal's again. The night that the bartender returned her rings to her. Can you tell this court what happened to those rings? She gave them to me for the homeless shelter. We had held a benefit and Dixie had been unable to attend, so she wanted to help. She gave me the rings. And what would you say her mental condition was on this evening? Objection. The witness is not qualified to judge the defendant's mental condition. Sustained. Allow me to rephrase. Would you say that Ms. Cooney displayed any erratic or unusual behavior that night? Absolutely none. Brooke, the way you were in there with Dixie, uh, the way you stood up for her, that was real nice. 
You did the decent thing, the fair thing, and it registered on the judge, so I just followed suit. Yeah. Well, you know, Miss Dupre, she wanted to get her fangs into me, and uh, when she started another night at Hal's, when we were celebrating the date, it just The kinda... hearing's starting again. Will you excuse me? Hey, Tom. How's it going? Okay. Listen, Brooke assigned me the story of redlining out at uh, Whitewood. I heard. Yeah. I also heard you're teaching Terrence how to write. <laughs> no, the kid can already write, believe me. I'm just cleaning up his act a little, you know, sentence structure. Oh, well. No, he's got a lot of power, really. Well, Terrence is all at fired him. up about writing. He figures you got all the answers. But you don't. Well, you seem to me to be the kind of guy who starts out strong but doesn't really follow through. Yeah, well, you're a real shrewd judge of character. But I don't need you to drive home the point, okay? I already got it. Good. Listen, uh, Brooke will stay here to give Dixie some support. I'm obviously doing any help here. I'll see you around, Tom. So, Ms. English, when you were married to Mr. Chandler, he seduced Dixie Cooney. And then when she bore his child, he tried to convince you to adopt this child as your own, all the while telling you that he had no idea who the father was? Yes. When I found out, I divorced him. He tried to win me back after he married Dixie. And the only reason he did that was to get legal rights to the child. Objection! He told me that himself, as if he were proud of the fact. Overruled. Now, Ms. English, has Mr. Chandler given you any reason to believe across time that he is no longer the lying, manipulative philanderer he was when he was married to you? Not a one. In my opinion, he is the unfit parent here, not Dixie. Objection! Mr. Chandler's fitness as a parent is not in question. Your Honor, I would suggest that in this and any custody hearing, the fitness of both parents is indeed at issue. Isn't it true that your own child was conceived as the result of an adulterous affair with Ms. Cooney's second husband? Dixie and her husband were separated at the time. She had just served him with divorce papers. But they were still legally married when you began your affair. Yes. So you're raising your illegitimate child without a father, and yet you impugn Adam Chandler's qualifications a a as a father? I don't think it's the number of parents in the home that really counts. I think it's who the parents are and how much they love that child and what values they teach that child. Speaking for myself, if anything ever happened to me, I would be proud and grateful to have my son raised by Dixie Cooney. The one thing that I will be eternally grateful for is that you are not the father of my child. You don't understand, Brooke. Nobody understands. I'm doing what's best for my son. You know what? You can keep on telling yourself that and maybe eventually you'll believe it, but I never will. You want to know what I think is the luckiest day of my life? The day I walked out on you. <laughs> I've been a puppet, a popper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king. I've been up and down and over and out. And I know one thing. Each time I find myself laying flat on my face, I just pick myself. One life to live. I guess I don't have to uh, figure out what the verdict was. Merry Christmas, Dixie. Unbelievably cruel. A couple of million kids out there. Lousy parents, broken homes, and what do they do? They take away Dixie's kid. Happy, healthy, loved. I didn't realize that you were coming back. Yeah, well, I wanted to hear the decision. And, uh, for Jamie. That was totally unnecessary. Well, maybe for you, but you can't disappoint him. I don't want him thinking Santa doesn't exist. He'll have plenty of presents under the tree. Yeah, but this one's special. I, uh, I'm not doing this to score points with you. Well, I hope not, because it's a waste of time if you are. No, I'm just holding up my end of a bargain. You made a bargain with Jamie? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a Saturday morning. You were on a conference call, and he was supposed to eat oatmeal, and he was watching TV, some dinosaur, something or other. Twenty commercials every segment. What did you promise him? Uh, this yellow duck walks on a leash. A pull toy? He loves those. Yeah, I know. This one uh, blows bubbles and quacks at the same time. So anyway, I, if he would promise to make the oatmeal disappear, I told him that Santa would be so kindly disposed. It was a long time ago. I'm sure he doesn't even remember. Look, I've broken a lot of promises in my day, but never to a kid. Did you put this under the tree for me? I think that you should go now. Tell Dixie how sorry I am.